Okay, this is a further video uh, explaining the process that um, I've made uh, since my last video on this project and um, as you can see I have a a one inch uh, aluminium bar in a, uh, yeah one inch aluminium bar in between centers and um, uh, it's worked out very well um, if you look at the uh, the end of the headstock there you'll see the uh, uh, right here the the um, uh, draw bar that I'm, I made with a, um, a dead center at this point here uh, that fits nicely in uh, the um, uh, take uh, blank collet uh, <clears throat> um, when I set this up I lined up the the two centers by eye with a magnifying glass and um, it was uh, they were pretty close and uh, so then I moved out my tailstock to uh, an opening that would take this length of of bar and that is actually it's just under it's four and three quarter inches long um, uh, it worked out very well um, it I actually had to adjust the tailstock in the uh, in the horizontal position uh, to actually get a cut that was parallel all the way along the aluminium and uh, so um, I don't consider that uh, uh, three adjustments is not too bad in aligning the tailstock up with the headstock um, one of the problems that uh, occurred during the development of this uh, particular tailstock was um, uh, first of all I had a I'll take this out and you can see um, at the back here in the horizontal bar that guides the tailstock along I had a um, the original idea was to have a um, a keyway uh, set into the into the shaft and uh, I thought that would be okay but I found that um, unless you have a really good um, accurate fit on the keyway you get uh, uh, well the distance between the bar and the and the tailstock center is approximately oh three and a half inches so if uh, there's not enough support at this end then that allows the uh, tailstock to flex under under pressure um, and um, that's what was happening uh, I was getting approximately uh, a three to five thou uh, flex of the uh, rearward flex of the tailstock at this point here uh, which was moving my center away from the headstock center and that uh, caused a bit of a problem when you were centering up a bar or a round bar in the chuck and so forth so um, unfortunately it would have meant uh, a whole new uh, effort being made uh, to solidify this unit here so um, the only alternative that I could see that was available was um, to stop this flex under pressure when you're drilling or 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 when you're locating centers between centers um, the only alternative I had was to put some kind of a, of a stop at the back and so uh, what I did was um, I utilized one of the um, riser blocks for the tag and um, uh, machined up a block uh, in an L shape so that it went underneath and gave clearance under here but supported 
uh, along the back edge here. So now the system is, um, uh, it's, it works out not bad because I can still move my saddle underneath the tailstock, which allows me to leave my tool post in position rather than having to keep on taking the tool post out and putting it in the rear T-slot and carrying on uh, machining this end of uh, something that's in the center. And then vice versa, when you get down this end, then you had the same problem. You had to take the tool post out and put it in the front T-slot. So um, this was the only alternative that I could see uh, without um, something really elaborate. Uh, and I've tried it and tested it, and it works very well. Uh, so... Um, uh, that's the situation at the moment. The the tailstock at this end comes through a clearance hole in this block, so there's no influence being made there. Um, and it's nice and solid. Uh, it saved a lot of work using one of these uh, um, riser blocks. Uh, they're not that expensive uh, when you consider the amount of work that's involved in in making something new. So. That's the position that I've reached so far. Uh, this um, micrometer uh, stop adjustment works really nice when you're lining up the centers uh, with a test bar. Um, it allows you to just uh, unlock this uh, locking, locking screw and just moving the micrometer in or out, whichever way is is necessary and uh, and uh, that kind of makes it quite easy so the fact that I this was the first time that I'd actually line the the tailstock up with the center so um, now that I have it set where it's parallel right the way along um, I'm hoping that um, that uh, in any other operation that takes place now where this is removed and replaced that um, it will go back uh, to its original position um, and shouldn't need any more adjustment uh, but that will have to be in the future um, because uh, I have uh, other things, other projects that that I have underway and, uh, and one of those is the uh, E.T. Westbury's um, uh, E.T. Westbury's uh, Sea Lion 30cc engine and um, so my wife has just informed me that I have to get it finished before I croak it so I'll just uh, I'll just swing the camera away a little bit and I'll just give you uh, a preview of my next project it's um, I'm probably about 80% finished. Um, it's a four-cylinder, 30cc overhead camshaft, um, and um, uh, I am in the process now um, of, uh, uh, of getting some plans up for a radiator. Um, as you can see inside with the crank, I. I followed E.T. Westbury's uh, advice and and locked the uh, connecting rod uh, screws, uh, the big ends, um, in with uh, wire uh, wire clips in the figure eight configuration, which uh, is a, a a reliable way of of uh, if anything comes loose, it's not going to come uh, too loose. So you should get plenty of warning. Um, don't want this thing whizzing around at 10,000 RPM and all of a sudden a screw comes loose. So as you can see, uh, that's the that's my next project. It's been a long, long time. Um, probably oh, 30 years. I pick it up and I put it down and. Uh, leave it for six months or even a year. It's probably close to two years since I've actually um, 
got it out of mothballs um, but it will be a nice engine when it's finished so that's my next project so you may see some um, some new videos from time to time as I progress I've got uh, the cylinder head done and the exhaust manifold is done the carburetor is done and um, uh, lots of bits and pieces it's almost ready for paint now so anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed the little the little videos they're not very professional I'm afraid uh, so um, but at least they give you an idea of what people are doing out there in the hobby in the hobby world and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it thank you